I greet you all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And let me come forward because I have the wonderful problem that from where I'm leading, I can't see you all. It's so wonderful to see so many of you here this morning to worship with us. It is our Harvest Festival service. And I think I prefer when we call it Harvest Thanksgiving because it reminds us that today we give thanks for God's gifts to us. God's gifts of nature in particular, but it's a chance to remember all of God's gifts so freely given to us. Now, those of you who are long-standing members of All Saints know that our tradition always has been that during the singing of a hymn, we bring up our gifts and the received and place at the altar. But uh, COVID changes everything, but it doesn't stop us giving. And so the gifts are here. Some people have kindly brought gifts of money, and they're at the back. So as we begin our worship, we're going to say a prayer of dedication and a prayer of thanks to God for his gifts. Let us pray. Dear loving Heavenly Father, as we are all together this morning, we understand that everything we have, all that we have, are gifts from you. And so we bring these, our gifts of food and gifts of money, just as a symbol of our thankfulness to you. We share what we have, with those who have less. We ask your blessing upon them. We ask your blessing upon us also. May we never forget how fortunate we are. May we always take a moment in each day to stop and say, thank you, God. Amen. Amen. So thank you. These gifts will stay here. And then after the required period of, of, of settling and not being touched, we will take them to Harrow Food Bank along with the gifts of money and they will be very quickly distributed to people in need around the bank. The Lord be with you. Those of you who are um, returning or are not so regular, uh, Ted, I hope you can see the screen. The words of the service are, are there. If not, if you lift your hand, Denise is what you should bring you an order of service if for any reason you can't see. As we begin our worship, let's pray together. The words are on the screen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we commend this time together to God's blessing, we remember also that each and every one of us, me included, we are all imperfect. So let's give thanks that God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, Firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And we confess together using the words on the screen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> and now we can say together, Gloria in excelsis. Again, it's on the screen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, 
You take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You're seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now we take a moment of silence and we pray our special prayer for this harvest thanksgiving service. Let us pray. Creator God, you made the goodness of the land, the riches of the sea, and the rhythm of the seasons. As we thank you for the harvest, may we cherish and respect this planet and its peoples. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now Ella will read our first reading. The first reading is taken from the first letter of Timothy, chapter 6, reading verses 6 to 10. Of course, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. For we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we'll be content with this. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And in their eagerness to be rich, some had warned away from the faith and pierce themselves with many pains. This is the word of the Lord. And now, if you wish, you can join the singing of the first hymn. If you're going to do so, please will you wear a mask. Um, and it is, we plow the fields and scatter.
you're able, and if you wish, please stand. It's habit farming that these masks sometimes, I guess it's a, it's a sign of the times when you forget you're wearing it. Hear the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus is speaking wonderful words. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about your clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I know I smile a lot, but if you saw me smile particularly just a moment ago, it's because Nicole has arrived, our representative from Prostate Cancer UK. You are very welcome, and well done for finding us. And thank you to everybody who's here this morning. It's wonderful to see swallows returning and occasional visitors with us. It's wonderful to see you all. Now, normally at a, a service on the first Sunday of the month, you know, if you can remember that far back, I used to love to walk around and be with you, but I'm going to try and stay here because of COVID restrictions. I can't promise, but I'll try. But I will be speaking to you, so please, uh, if there's a question, don't be shy, and just respond as you would if we were chatting at home. So it's like a, not really a text, but we're going to think about two things this morning. The words of that wonderful Harvest Hymn, the beginning of the chorus, all good gifts around us are sent from heaven above, and those incredible words of Jesus. Do not worry about what you will eat or drink. Easier said than done, Thomas, isn't it, when your tummy gets empty so quickly? But Jesus said it. So even if you get hungry, Tom, that means some food and drink will be coming. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. And, and don't worry. Why should we not worry? Because, you know, these last 18 months have been so hard all of us in different ways have worried. We've had sadness. We've had extreme sadness. So why does Jesus say, don't worry? Well, maybe you remember that Jesus did a, a parable of the talents where he gave different numbers, of, uh, or a person, a fictional person, gave different numbers of talents to different people and challenged them how to use them. And he said when he was giving that parable, he said, to those who have, more will be given. More will be given, but not easily. If you remember, the, one of the guys, the smart one, he dug a hole, he put it in, he said, whenever the, the guy comes back, I'll be able to give it back to him. And then he went home and sat back and didn't worry about what he would eat and drink. 
and that did him no good at all. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Yes, we're all given gifts, and we're all challenged to use them. Today, we've given thanks for the gifts of food, and we've brought wonderful food here. Yeah, but I can't stay still. First thing I find, eh? biscuits. Beautifully packaged. Very nice to have with coffee and tea. Yeah, but they weren't picked from the ground like this. And the raw materials that made them weren't just popped into the ground and then taken out. I remember when I was back on the farm and we were milking cows and then delivering milk around the local villages. One Sunday afternoon, I was bringing the cows back for their afternoon milking. And one of our customers from the next village was out with his family. And he wound the window down. I was expecting a cursing. We normally got a cursing when we were slowing the traffic down. But I saw it was friend, not foe. And he said to me, or he said to his children, look, children, there's your tomorrow's painter going back to be milked from the cows. I thought, if only you knew what goes on between those cows going home and the painter going on the doorstep. The milk went up to Durham. It was pasteurized. It was bottled. The truck brought it back. It was a couple of days before it got it, and a lot had gone on. Gifts, yes, but gifts must be used to be grown. And so, Dave, could you give us our first uh, slide, please? Right, who is this? Ronaldo. He made my day. Thank you, Christian, for coming back to Man U. And if you're a City supporter, my deep apologies. Okay, wonderful footballer. But does he just go out every few days and kick a ball around on the pitch for Man U? No, he works hard. He has a wonderful talent. But he works on it. I don't know if anybody saw, even if you didn't see the match, what he did when he scored on Wednesday night. He pulled off his shirt. Ladies, did you see those muscles? You know, the guy works hard to be fit, to develop his talents, to hone his talents, to me, to be able at 36 still to be able to turn a game on his head. He has incredible talents, but he works on them to make them bigger. Number two, please, Dave. And now where are we? Gay Paris. My Yorkshire church warden said, I see you've, you've put Blackpool up <laughs> in our dreams. Paris. And what language do they speak in Paris? Mainly French. Parlez-vous français, monsieur? Monsieur? Oui? Yeah, okay, some of us can make a smattering of French, but if you're English, yeah, Ella's lucky, she's a Latin, and she can pick up languages just by hearing them. But we Brits, it's not easy. We have to work at it. We have a talent for languages, all of us, but we have to work to improve them. They don't just come from the sky. Number three, Dave. Now we come back to the Holy Bible. Maggie, it's Jesus with the children in his arms. And there are plenty of pictures of Jesus with the children. I chose this one in particular. Anybody guess why, if you can see it well enough? Jesus is smiling. That's why I chose it. There are plenty with him with a straight face and the children. But here he's smiling and the children are smiling. Jesus, the Son of God, came to serve God. He came to use his talents. He recognized that children are wonderful gifts. He cherished them. And he didn't worry. He was happy. The disciples wanted to kick them away. And he said, leave them. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. And there we have Jesus with a smile on his face. And I could just imagine with a smile on his face saying, don't worry about what you're going to eat and what you're going to drink. And he meant it. 
because the food and drink that he was talking about are all the different parts of our lives. We shouldn't worry as long as we work to use and grow our gifts. We've all got different gifts. Yeah, as a left-hander, I'm as clumsy as they come. So I don't think a career in a, um, a highly technical job would be for me. But there are plenty of people who can use a little soldering pen and put a little dot so that a microchip works properly. If you got a microchip from me, I think when you told it to go left, it would go right. Yep. So there are people with gifts who can do it. The challenge for us is to all combine and to use our gifts for the good of all. Nicole, now I can use the marathon example. You're here. Uh, you know, you all know I ran the half marathon a couple of weeks ago. I didn't just get up that morning. They go, I'll drive down to Hampton Court, trot round for 13.1 miles. No, there was weeks and months of preparation. It wasn't easy, but there were a team of supporters there, ringing bells like crazy, cheering, blowing whistles, and it helped. People were there using their talents to support. And all of you gave the most incredible help by giving money. And that was a real impetus to do it, to train, to go through the pain barrier, to pick myself up when I fell on Box Tree Lane. Yes, everything came together. All of our gifts combined can do tremendous things. And so it is that in a couple of minutes we're going to give a, a check for a thousand pounds to prostate cancer. And the money is still coming in as sponsorship. I'm sure there's going to be over four thousand pounds for church funds. Joint effort using our gifts. Right, one final word of caution. When Jesus said, Don't worry about what we eat and drink. That didn't mean we can just, as I joke with Tommy, you know, lie back and wait for, for Mum or Devon to bring the next food to him. No, I'm sorry, Tommy, I'll lay off you now. Whenever you come, I tease you, I'm sorry. It doesn't mean we can take things for granted. Paul, in a letter to the church in Corinth, put it beautifully. He was talking about the church that he developed in Corinth. He said, I planted the church, Apollos, the local leader of the church, he watered the plants, but it was God who helped you grow. And he said, so neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. Now that applies to everything to being a great footballer, to speaking a foreign language, to being a child, and to caring for our children. There are wonderful words at the end of the Holy Gospel reading. Dave, could you give us the final slide? This was, I read these words. I put them up just so that we can focus on them as we conclude. Yeah, it's not easy. Sometimes it's really, really hard. I can see people in this congregation who've been kicked in the teeth repeatedly and horribly over these last 18 months. It's not always easy. These are the words of encouragement of Jesus. Strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. It's a paraphrase of seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be given unto you. Allelu, alleluia. The key then, we are given gifts. We must give in return and giving we will receive. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. In the book of Proverbs, there's wonderful guidance about how we can both receive and give. The writer wrote, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. Use your gifts for God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in God for the gifts that he gives us. 
And then the wonderful advice. Forget about thinking how clever we are, how smart we are. Just remember that all good gifts come from God. And then we don't need to worry. That is a recipe for life. It's as good a recipe as the one that made these biscuits. I commend it to us all. Amen. And so, as I said, I'm no longer limping. I've still got pain in the arm and leg from the fall. But no pain, no gain. The gain is that now I invite you, Nicole, to come up because we're going to present to Prostate Cancer UK a cheque for £1,000. And thank you for coming. And thank you for just allowing me to put my mask on, Nicole. Because we're going to be close together. So, Nicole, you've heard that we decided right from the very beginning, there's a young lady there, Devon, who walked, was it Sep? Sep, Sep yeah. So, Devon did her bit, and I said at the time, if she did her bit, I would do my bit. And so, my bit was to run the half marathon at Hampton Court. I've got a wonderful, I don't have a face mask like yours, but I've got a wonderful hoodie, and I think Devon has as well. We did what we did with pleasure and with pain because Devon's dad died with prostate cancer and there are others in the congregation who fought with it. We're dedicating this to Doug. That's why it says, uh, for, in memory of Doug Garrett. And it says, Devon, a true gentleman. So this isn't the real thing. The real thing's in there, Nicole. I give it to you on behalf of the charity from us at All Saints. And if you could tell us a little bit about how it'll be used, that would be wonderful. Here you are, though, and look after, look after the check. Could <laughs> you stand there, then everybody will be able to hear you. Good morning, all. Uh, thank you, John. Oh, I could take my mask off, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I work at the NHS, so I'm just used to wearing this uh, all the time. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you so much for inviting me, John. And I must say congratulations on completing the marathon because I've run a half marathon myself for prostate cancer. And I know it does take a lot of dedication, training, uh, and as well as you mentioned, support to complete it. So thank you so much and congratulations on completing it. Um, uh, before I start, I just want to say uh, I've been a volunteer at Prostate Cancer for about uh, 10 years. Um, I'm originally from Trinidad and Tobago, and uh, my dad uh, was diagnosed with prostate cancer. He didn't actually die from prostate cancer, he died from something else, but uh, his brother died from prostate cancer, and I do have a brother and a nephew, so I'm very passionate about sort of raising awareness of prostate cancer because obviously I I think personally I felt that had I known more about prostate cancer, actually I, I didn't actually know anything about prostate cancer when my, I heard my dad was diagnosed, so I do feel that had I known more, uh, you know, we could have got the right treatment for him because he didn't get the right treatment. Um, so I'm very passionate about what I do and I'm so glad that you have actually um, raised funds for us because you help our work. Um, so on behalf of Prostate Cancer UK, thank you all for your generosity. Uh, we greatly appreciate your donation and kindness. Your support will help further our mission, which is to fundraise for research to stop prostate cancer being a killer, investing in better treatment that can stop fast-growing cancers only early, and better testing that could be used in a screen program to save thousands of lives. A few facts that some of you might already know, and for those who don't know, in the UK, about one in eight men will get prostate cancer, and the risk is higher for black men, which is one in four getting prostate cancer in their lifetime. The latest data also shows that 12,000 men died from prostate cancer in one year, and most of these men died because prostate cancer was not diagnosed early enough. That's 12,000 friends, brothers, lovers, and dads we have lost. But, but did you know that in 2030, prostate cancer will be the most common cancers, com most common of all cancers? So 
knowing the problem at Prostate Cancer UK, we need to tackle and fix these problems. And our plan currently is to get more men diagnosed early, get men diagnosed more accurately, get better treatment, and get better support for men and their families. We can't do this on our own, and we need passionate people like John and the congregation to help us carry out our plan. Today, as I accept this check donation for £1,000, you have joined our movement to help us carry out our plan. So again, thank you very much for your time, for your donation, for your support, and for uniting with Prostate Cancer UK, because together we can beat prostate cancer. And if you'd like some more information about prostate cancer, about what we do, um, you can visit our website at prostatecancer.com. UK.org. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we share our gifts of money, we ask your blessing upon the work of all of those involved with Prostate Cancer UK. We pray for consultants, doctors, nurses and researchers all working diligently to understand more about this cancer, how it can be defeated and how people at risk may be helped. And as we ask your blessing upon their work. We remember those who we have known and loved who are no longer with us as a result of prostate cancer and other cancers. We thank you that we were given the gift of their love in our lives. And we pray that we may show that we have benefited from that love by the way that we live our lives now. These prayers we ask in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we have the words of the Creed. I invite you to join me as we confess our faith. I, yes, please stand, sorry. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So, thank you for knowing you should stand. Please be seated. Tony will lead our prayers of intercession. Almighty and everlasting Lord, creator of all that is here on this earth, we give thanks for all that we see and know. There are many things that we do not understand and are yet to be revealed, but we can only marvel at the glory of yours that is yours. We stand in awe of your power and love, and we pray for you to seek your help and guidance in our lives with humility and simple knowledge that you, our Heavenly Father, will listen to our prayers. We pray that there will be enough food in the world to sustain us all, that there will be no greed, and we can all learn to share what we have in a compassionate and fair way. Food will be distributed without it being a political tool and to manipulate people's own ends. We pray that we can eradicate famine and hunger. 
Lord, hear us. We pray for areas of our world where hatred and war make the efforts of daily lives even more difficult. We understand, Lord, that there are many ways that people worship you. Give guidance to all political leaders to show the compassion and love that you, Lord, have given us. The words to live by. Blessed are the peacemakers and treat our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, hear us. We pray for our own country and those in authority. We pray that the wisdom and understanding that you have shown will be passed on to the leaders of our communities and our current problems caused by political decisions will be remedied, be it fuel shortages, the risk of empty shelves, or the lack of skilled carers. Lord, hear us. We pray for all the families represented here today and within our community. We are particularly concerned for those who are affected by current economic situations, rising fuel bills to heat homes, the lack of homes for those who need and those who cannot be they're losing their homes as a result of the current crisis through no fault of their own. We are mindful of the, political, of the potential suffering of young people and those who have fallen through the cracks of community care. Make us all aware of the situation and give us all an understanding of how we can help. Lord, hear us. We pray for all our world leaders and with special prayers for those who have been attending conferences to discuss the ways we can repair the damage caused by mass ignorance and greed. There are always been people who have cried in the wilderness for climate change and political leaders have always paid superficial attention to them, the words that they hear have said. But now, Lord, we know that we are really dis desecrating your world, and perhaps we have ignored the writing of the wall for too long. We pray that those who can help to ensure the words are heeded will see the national disasters that ensure that the words are heeded. We see the natural disasters that are filling us, the floods, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and the rise of sea levels. These are all natural things that are really beyond our power to change. But you, Lord, are all-powerful, and perhaps you are demonstrating to us your power. Give us all the wisdom to help change the ways we work and think about our world. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for the sick, both at home and hospital or hospice. We think of the elderly, those who are housebound and those who have in care homes. We pray for all who care for them and attend their needs. Give strength and faith to them, renew their courage to face each day and give comfort to those who are suffering physical and mental stress. Lord, hear us. And we pray for those who have departed this life, either recently or in the past, the loved ones that we remember and cherish. May the knowledge of your resurrection of glory in glory be a comfort to all who, who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In a moment we're going to share the peace, but just a message over there, it's the most wonderful noise in the world. We love to hear because it means the children are with us. So don't worry, be happy. Christ is our peace. He's reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name. We have the privilege to share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I wave to you a sign of peace. Please share the peace with a wave. And to those of you following from home or even on holiday in the Scilly Isles, peace be with you. 
And now we prepare the table for the Eucharist and the choir will sing for us. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life. Make us branches of the true vine. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It's our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For He is your living Word. Through Him you've created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through Him you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving Him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised Him from the dead and exalted Him to your right hand on high, through him, you've sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
accept through him our great high priest this our sacrifice of thanks and praise and as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty renew us by your spirit inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your son Jesus Christ our Lord through him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit with all who stand before you in earth and heaven we worship you Father Almighty in songs of everlasting praise blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever Amen and now as our Saviour taught us so we pray our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen we break this bread to share in the body of Christ though we are many we are one body because we all share in one bread Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world grant us peace the body and blood of Christ our Lord we will share the Eucharist in one kind if you stay in your seats in a moment I will mask and I will bring the Eucharist to you where you sit if you prefer simply a blessing please keep your hands down and I will give that blessing those at home I commend the prayer of the act of spiritual communion the body of Christ
Now let us pray. Lord of the harvest, with joy we have offered thanksgiving for your loving creation, and we have shared in the bread and the wine of the kingdom. By your grace, plant within us a reverence for all that you give us, and make us generous and wise stewards of the good things we enjoy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen. And now the choir will sing our closing hymn, You Shall Go Out. Oh, we can all sing, sorry, if we, if we must. You Shall Go Out With Joy. didn't just sing, we clapped as well. Well done, everybody. Let's pray. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those who you love, wherever they may be, today and every day. Amen. I'll try to be very quick because today we've, the service has lasted longer than usual. My apologies for that. I hope you'll come again. It's wonderful to see so many people here. That was our record number. And thank you to the, uh, the Garrett family for being very uh, cautious with the final wafers. Well done. Thank you. Uh, it's wonderful to see everybody here. Uh, we'll be worshipping God as usual, a Wednesday at 10.30 and then next Sunday at 10 o'clock. Um, one particular notice, apart from that, you know, again, thank you for this. They will be taken to the food bank. Um, I'm hoping Linda will help us as usual. She's nodding, I think she is nodding. Thank you, Linda. And we'll take the gifts of money as well. And I can promise you that they tell me their needs are greater than ever at the moment. So thank you for these gifts. Um, one special notice... This morning, uh, we need, if possible, to have a very short and informal meeting of the PCC. Only 10, 15 minutes. So, it, PCC members, if you could come to the front, use the front couple of pews, and as soon as everybody else has left, we will start. Not, nothing ominous, but it's very short. And that means we will not have a, particularly those of you at home, will not have a Zoom coffee this morning. But tomorrow evening, the ladies have invited the gentlemen to join them for a, a, I don't think it's an open mic evening, but it's an open evening via Zoom with a glass of wine or a glass of beer or a, glass, a cup of tea. So that's 8 o'clock tomorrow evening. Rather than it being just the ladies' evening, it'll be open to everybody to join via Zoom. But sorry if you were planning to Zoom this morning. Today, I'm afraid you have to drink your coffee by yourself. But tomorrow evening, 8 o'clock. And so, whatever you're going to be... Oh, sorry, one more thing. We've grown a little bit lapsed the last couple of weeks. Please, during the singing of the last hymn, if you're not in the PCC and staying, could you move outside? And there's plenty of room outside to chat outside. But we really shouldn't chat inside church uh, just yet. I hope before too long we'll be drinking coffee in church. But one step at a time, at least we've sung today. Wherever you're going to be these coming days, whatever you're going to be doing, go in peace. Love.
and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Because